All praises to the most High God. Tonight's topic is called Enduring Temptations. Enduring Temptation. That's tonight's topic. How to endure temptations. We're going to be going over that this day. Give me the book. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 1. Let's start there. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Read again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm-hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. He says, my son, if you come to serve the Lord... Prepare thy soul for temptation. Now, watch this. We're going to deal with this whole verse. It says, if you come to serve the Lord, I want to deal with that part just for a second. If you come to serve the Lord. Give me that in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 20. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Each and every one in here, you are here to serve the Lord. Or oh, that's my thought process. Everybody that is in here, you are here to serve the Lord. Watch this. This is the requirement for you to serve the Lord. 1 Samuel 12 verse 20. Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 20. Mm -hmm. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistine. No, no. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 20. Come on. Stay focused. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this, ye have done all this wickedness. Ye have turned aside from following the Lord. Yet turn not, serve... yet turn not, turn not. Read the verse again, come on. For Samuel chapter 12 verse 20. Mm-hmm. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness. Ye have turned not aside from following the Lord. Mm-hmm. But serve the Lord with all your heart. You see what Samuel is telling the people? Because the people was doing some evil stuff. So now Samuel is like, listen, turn not from saving the Lord your God. You understand? He's encouraging the people. He says, get it right. You messed up, you better get it right. Okay? He says, turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Because Samuel was a mighty prophet, so he was the one that was teaching. He prayed for the congregation. He prayed for the people. You understand? Like we are doing this day. Go ahead. Only fear the Lord. Mm-hmm. And only serve do him. what? Only fear the Lord. He says, only fear the Lord. He says, I'm going to pray for you. But only fear the Lord. Fear the most High God. Go ahead. And serve him in truth with all your heart. You see that thing? And serve the Lord in truth with all your heart. The reason why our forefather Samuel is is iterating this point here is because as a nation, we've had a reputation if you read the history of being double-minded. You understand? We want to eat our cake. We want to have our cake and eat it too. That has always been the problem with Israel. You understand? Double-mindedness. One foot in and one foot out. Samuel now is saying, listen, don't be double-minded when you come before the Lord. You better serve him in truth with all your heart. Okay? Read that again. Verse 24. 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 24. Go ahead. Only fear the Lord Mm -hmm. and serve him in truth with all your heart. Read. For consider how great Things he has done for you. Because I'll give an example. Because today our people, you know what they do? Every Sunday they go to church. In their minds, they think that they are saving the Lord. They are not. Now, let's say that's true. Now, yes, they go to church on Sunday. But also at the same breath, they are an ANC member. They are an EFF member. They are a DA member. They are an AFP member. You see that thing? So the most I don't want that. If you come in to serve the Lord, come out of politics. The Lord never gave you a commandment to vote for nobody. 
You understand? He gave you a command to serve him and him only because he is a jealous God. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. You see that thing? He says, for, for consider how great things he hath done for you. What are those great things that the Lord has done for us? Guess what? Because we always forget. The most High God is always making sure that he reminds us of the great things that he done for us. We was delivered out of Egypt. You understand? That's one of the that's the great one of the great things he did for us. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Something just popped into my head. I just want to read it real quick. Matthew 6 and verse 24. Read that. Matthew 6, verse 24. Just to err on the point that the prophet, the prophet Samuel was saying. He says, serve the Lord with all your heart. This is the reason why he said it. Read it. Matthew 6, 24. Come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Read. No man can serve two masters. You see that thing? No man can serve two masters. Read. For either he will hate the one you and love the, the other. You see that thing? You can't have it both. You will hate the one and love the other. But you cannot, you cannot say, I love both. Read. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Mm -hmm. He cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the devil. That's what he's saying right there. So don't be double-minded, the Lord is saying. Watch this. Give me the book of Joshua 24 verse 14. Joshua chapter 24 verse 14. It says we must serve him with all our heart and soul. We must serve the Lord with all our heart and serve him only. Watch this. Joshua 24, verse 14. Read that. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Come on. Now therefore, fear the Lord mm -hmm. and serve him in sincerity and in truth. You see that thing? Serve the Lord, fear him. Serve the Lord. You must fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. You understand? This is how you serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. He's going to tell you. Keep going. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. You see that thing? And it this is one of the ways. This is how you fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. You must put away the other gods. You must put away the idols. Just like our forefathers had, had to be forced to put away the idols that was worshipping in Egypt. And the Lord did it forcefully because what did the Lord do? He destroyed all the, 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 the idols that Egypt was worshipping. They worshipped the sun and so forth. You understand? They worship, uh, they worship the they worship the frog, they worship the crocodile, so on and so forth. They was worshipping all type of all, all type of filth. The Lord made sure that you know what? All these things that you are worshipping, I'm gonna show you that these are not gods. I'm the almighty here. You understand? Read that again, verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Read. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Mm -hmm. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. Go ahead. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. You see that thing? So to serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth, you must put away the idols in your mind. You must put away the idols that you are saving in the lands of your captivity. That is what the Lord wants from us. Because guess what? We are in the lands of our captivity today. We are in slavery. Our, as a, our people, they are worshipping other gods. Those that are still in the Christian church, in politics, you understand? Toy towing, democracy and all of that, they are worshipping other gods. And so the Lord is saying, listen, you must put away those gods and come and serve me in sincerity and in truth. That's what the Lord is looking for. Because what we're reading in Joshua is what Christ said in John 4. Read that in John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. Go ahead. God is a spirit, and mm -hmm. they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see that thing? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit 
and in truth. The thing that Christ did not add here is he's not explained. This is how you worship God in sincerity and in truth. You must put away the gods which your fathers worshipped on the other side of the flood. You must put away these idols that you are worshipping in the lands of your captivity. Because during the time of Christ, Rome was in power. Rome was ruling. So during the time of Rome, we was worshipping Diana. You understand? Diana of the Ephesians and so forth. Because those were the, those are, those, that's one of the Roman gods. We were worshipping Saranelia. You understand? We was worshipping um, Ishtar, Ashtoreth, the goddess of fertility. That is what we was worshipping during those times. You understand? Because we were under Rome. And Rome just took those Greek gods and renamed them. Greece, where did the, where did the Greeks get the gods that they were worshipping? They got them from the, the, the empires before them. Persia, Babylon, Egypt, Assyria. They got all those idols. They brought them into their kingdom. You understand? They just gave them new names. But it was still the same things. You understand? So that's the only thing. Christ didn't mention that. But this is where he's getting it from. In the book of Joshua. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. So go back to Joshua 24. Joshua 24, verse 14. Read that again. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Read. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Mm -hmm. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. Come on. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. You see that thing? The gods that we worship on the other side of the flood, because we was in Egypt. Remember, we was in Egypt worshiping other gods. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. Although Joshua put this out in the spirit of Christ, guess what? There were some wicked Negroes that it seemed evil unto them to do that thing. Read. Verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye, choose you this day whom you will serve. You see what he's saying? Whether the is it, it says, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Because guess what? The same thing that Joshua was experiencing with those Negroes in the wilderness, get when we we're supposed to go and get when we we're going to get the land, possess it, and all that. Guess what is going? What was what they say? What was going on back then? There were those of our forefathers and foremothers that had problems with the laws of God being given out, being taught to them. Guess what? It's the same thing today. It's evil when we teach the people the commandment because they say, no, don't judge me. Oh, no, don't tell me what to do. Oh, no, don't say this. No, that's judging. No, you cannot dictate. Who... Listen, the... we just read in the Bible because our people hate the Bible. It's that simple. You understand? Go ahead. Whether the gods which your father served that mm -hmm. were on the other side of the flood, read, or the gods of the Amorites, mm -hmm. in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see what he's saying? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. You see that thing? Because they, were, they did not want to let it go until Joshua got on them. Joshua had to get on our forefathers and foremothers and say, listen, what is the matter with you? you? You know what the Lord did for you. Samuel said the same thing. He says, lest you forget the things that the Lord did for you. You understand? When he delivered us out of the land of Egypt. Guess what? Joshua is telling them. Now he's saying, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Because what was they doing? They were worshipping other gods. Joshua had to get on them for them to what? To get their minds right. To get their senses together. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 6 verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Read. Thou shalt fear thy God. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. And serve him, and shall swear by his name. 
You see what he's saying? Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. You understand? Because right now, guess what we are doing? Now we are, we are we, we, when he said we are swearing by other, the names of other gods, our people are doing that, they are saving other gods. You understand? They swear in why Jesus. You understand that they, they love the Lord, but they don't love the Lord. You understand? Because they're what? They are still worshiping idols. They have not repented as the children of Israel and acknowledging that we have sinned and we have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. They don't want to acknowledge that. Okay, come on. Ye shall not go after other gods. You see that thing? Of the gods. This, hold on. This is how you serve the Most High. He is telling you again here. The prophets, they've been saying the same thing. It says what? Read that part, read that part again, verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14. Read. Ye shall not go after other gods. Mm -hmm. Of the gods of the people which are round about you. You see that thing? So that's how you make sure that that's how you serve the Lord. You don't go after other gods of the nations that are round about you. You don't do that. Right now, our people, they are saving the gods of the nations that are round about them. They are following the gods of their slave masters. That's what's happening right now with our people. They still want to bow down to white Jesus. They still want to bow down to what? The system that comes with polity. The system of white Jesus is politics. The system of white Jesus is Christianity. The system of white Jesus is you can do whatever you want. Jesus died for you. You understand? He fulfilled the law. So I don't got to keep no laws. That's the point. That's, that's the effects of worshipping the idols of these nations. Okay, come on. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Mm -hmm. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You see that thing? The Moses God, he killed the first generation that came out of Egypt. Not only that, it says what? He says he destroyed thee from off the face of the earth. What happened? Give me Lamentations 2 verse 1. Let me show you what happens when the Lord destroyed us from off the face of the earth. Okay? Because this is what the Lord did to us. Because we pissed him off. Watch this. Lamentations 2 verse 1. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth? Mm -hmm. the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. So now we have the kingdom. The Lord took us out of that kingdom and put us in any what? We were found ourselves in the earth. Meaning what? In slavery. Now, guess what? All over the world, we are serving slavery. We are in captivity. Wherever the Lord has scattered us, we are slaves over there. That's what the Lord did. But we still don't learn. Our people don't learn nothing. You understand? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 15 again. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 15. Go ahead. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Go ahead. Ye shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as ye tempted him in Massa. You can read about that in the book of Exodus. Go ahead. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, mm -hmm. and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. So, guess what? Moses is still explaining how to serve the, Lord, the most high God and swear by his name. His name, which is what? Which is his laws. So now he's telling you how to serve the Lord. To serve the Lord means you keep the commandments. You understand? Diligently you must keep all his commandments. You understand? His testimonies and his statutes, which he commanded us. Go ahead. And thou, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that mm -hmm. it may be well with thee. And that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. You see that thing? So right now we're preparing for that. To go and get that good land that the Lord promised unto our forefathers. You understand? But to serve the Lord your God. From verse 13 down, verse, verse 14, 
is, is explaining verse 13 on down to verse um, 18. He's telling you how to serve the Lord. You must keep his commandments. In John 4, Christ didn't explain that. Because the assumption is, you know the Old Testament. You're supposed to know what the law says. Meaning what? He sent you right back to Moses. You understand? He sent us right back to Moses. Watch this. Go back to Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. Okay, go back to Ecclesiastes 2, verse 1 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Read. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare mm. thy soul for temptation. So what is Sirach teaching us? Sirach is teaching us that if you come to serve the Lord, what are you saying? I am repenting and now I want to keep the commandments. You understand? That's when you begin to serve the Lord. Once you do that, that's you preparing for your soul to be tempted, for your soul to be tried. You understand? Because we're, when you are in the world, there is no fight that you are in. What are you fighting? What are you fighting against? Nothing. You understand? Because you are indulging in your sins. You are indulging in your lust. So there's no fight. But when you come to serve the Lord, what are you saying? You are saying, I'm repenting. And because I'm repenting, I'm going to deny my flesh. You understand? And I'm going to discipline my flesh with the laws of the Most High. That's when your soul is prepared for temptation. Because when temptation comes, guess what's going to defend you? The laws of God that you would have set down and studied. And now you're applying to prepare for the day of your trial. You understand? Watch this. Give me Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Luke 15 and verse 10. Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Go ahead. Likewise, I say unto you, mm -hmm. there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. You see that thing? So there's something that happens in the spirit. Give me that in Romans 7 verse 14. There's something that happens in the spirit when you repent. When you decide, you know what? Now I'm coming to serve the Lord. Do you see what happens in heaven where the Lord, the Most High God is? The angels, they rejoice when one of our brothers and sisters repent and come into this truth. So there's a spiritual thing that happens. Read that. Romans 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. You see that thing? But the law is spiritual. The laws of God are spiritual. So when you decide, you know what? Now I need to repent. I'm tired of this evil, demonic, abominable lifestyle. I'm living. I need to repent now. I need to keep God's commandments. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. I must humble down and obey that. Guess what? The law is the spiritual thing that happens. Guess what? It's so powerful that even the angels in heaven, they rejoice when one of us repent and come into this truth. So because you, re you repent, that's your declaration of war against spiritual wickedness. Because there's evils everywhere. Now you are declaring war in the spirit, in the spirit realm. That, then you're going to be tested. You are going to be tried. Watch this. Because when you decide I want to repent, keep God's commandments, you understand? The, the angels, they rejoice. Guess what? Now your trials also, they are activated. You understand? Watch this. Give me the, give me the book of Job. Okay? Give me Job. Give me Job chapter 1 verse 6. This is what happens in the spirit world when you repent. Okay? Yes, the angels, they rejoice. They are excited over the moon because you are repenting. That because that's a glorious thing right there. That's power right there. Watch this. Job 1 and 6. Read what you got. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Read. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them. You see that thing? The sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Because in the, the reason why this is, is, is very heavy is because in the Christian church, under Christianity, they teach that Satan was kicked out of heaven. That's a lie. Because what we're reading here says, is that Satan came also among them. You understand? A conversation is being had. Satan is also among the sons of God. Watch this. Next verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, 
Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. You see that thing? The Lord is asking, you see what he says, And the Lord said unto Satan, You, I mean, notice here, there's no war going on, there's no fight. The Lord is not even surprised why Satan is there, because he's there. Because if that was the case that he was kicked out of heaven, there should have been a problem here in verse 7. There's none. They are having a conversation here. Read verse 7 again. Job chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where do you come then from? Say, you see that? Where do you come from, Satan? He is asking me a question. You understand? He didn't evaporate Satan. He is asking, where do you come from? Read. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, mm -hmm. From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. You see that thing? From going to and fro in the earth, and, walk, and from walking down in it. Meaning what? I was taking a stroll. That's what he's saying right here. He was taking a stroll. Because another thing also you need to think about it is that the most High God, all-knowing, all-powerful, that's why he's called the Almighty. Okay? He, that's why he's called the Almighty in the first place. So you mean to tell me Satan will just show up unannounced, the Lord be not know about it if he was kicked out of heaven? I mean, that's just common sense. Okay? Watch this. He says he was going up and down. He says going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. How did he do it? Give me that in Genesis, Genesis 28 verse 12. This is how Satan was able to go up and down from walking to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Watch this. Read that, Genesis 28 verse 12. Genesis 28 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached up, reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. You see that thing? From walking up and down in it. Because were, that's why you see, if you look at NASA, you see what NASA is doing? They are trying to build a space, a space elevator. I remember this as a very long time ago, they've been talking about it. Wanting to build a space elevator. You understand? When you watch that movie, The Transformers, the dark side of the moon, you see, um, it's not Optimus Prime, but is I forgot his name. He built... Okay, he built a space bridge, and from the moon base, those, 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 oh, not the Autobots, but um, the Decepticons, because the Decepticons, by the way, those are the good guys. They had to, they, they used the space bridge to teleport from the moon to Earth. So, where do you think Iso gets that stuff from? You think he's that clever? No, he's not that clever. He's getting it from the Bible. You see that thing? That's what we're reading here. Read that again, verse 12. Genesis chapter 8, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. You see that thing? The angels of God ascending and descending are descending on it. That's the space bridge. You understand? Okay. Let's go back. Job chapter 1. Job 1 verse 7. Job chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Because thou used the space bridge. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Stop right there. The, Read that part again. Job chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? You, is there, Hast thou considered my servant Job? This is the Lord speaking to Satan now. He says, Because you've been going up and down in the earth, you understand, have you considered my servant down there, Job? Have you seen my servant? So guess what? Just replace your Job's name with your name. Have you considered my servant Jonah? Have you considered my servant Bezalel? Have you considered my servant Sister Phoebe? 
Sister Tebuko, have you considered my servant? So on and so forth. Guess what? That's the conversation that is had about you when you repent and come into this truth. While you are in the truth, when your trial is about to come, the conversation is had with about you. This is heavy. You understand? While the angels are rejoicing and all of that, guess what? Satan now is also going to try you at the command of the Lord. He's going to try you. Have you considered my servant Jonah down there? Have you considered my servant brother Tabo down there? Have you considered them? You see that thing? Have you considered my servant sister Selina? Have you considered my servant down there? That's the conversation that happens in the spirit world. Heavy stuff. Go ahead. That there is none like him in the earth. Mm -hmm. A perfect and upright man. Go ahead. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. You see that thing? This is the conversation about you. It says he's a perfect and an upright man or woman. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. Meaning what? He keeps the commandments. You understand? He does not tolerate nonsense and BS. Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, mm -hmm. Does Job fear God for naught? He says, you see, he, he doesn't fear you for nothing. Does he fear you for nothing? For no reason? Go ahead. Has thou, has not thou made an hedge about him mm -hmm. and about his house and Read. about all that has and about all that he has on every side, Read. thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So now Satan is telling the Lord, say, listen, the reason why you are protecting him is because, the reason why he's prospering is because you are protecting him. You are looking after him. That's why he's prospering. You understand? You've blessed the work of his hands. He's wealthy and so forth. Watch this. Today, it might be what? Your job. You have a job, you can take care of your family. You have a job, you can maintain yourself. You understand? Things of, as an example, you just get a, you got a new car now. You are able to commute from back and forth and so forth. And all those things, guess what? You get sick. Now you have your health, everything is good. Out of nowhere, you get sick and so forth. Whatever the case may be. Okay, right? But put forth thine hand now. And touch all that he has, mm -hmm. and he will curse thee to thy face. You see that thing? It says, touch all that he has, and he will, he will what? He will curse thee to thy face. He's going to turn on you. He will betray you if you take everything that he's got. That's what the Lord is telling Satan. You understand? So don't just leave the trial back then. Remember, I gave you an example. I showed you that, listen, the conversation that was heard about Job is the same conversation that is heard about you when you come into this truth. So now it says, Satan says, put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had, he will cast thee to thy face. Meaning what? Make him lose his job. Make her lose her job. You understand? Make them to be sick. Whatever the case may be. Once that happens, guess what? They will turn on you. That's what Satan is telling the Lord. You see that? Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that is all that he hath is in thy power. Mm -hmm. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You see that thing? Now he went to do what he does best, to cause confusion. So now he's saying, uh, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine, meaning don't kill him. You can do any, everything else, but don't kill him. You see that? Watch this. It says, now after that, Satan, he went about his business. So what did, what did, what, what did Satan just receive? He just received instructions. What to do, what not to do. You can tie him up to this point, but do not touch him. Don't touch my servant. Don't kill him. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 8. Luke chapter 4. I'll give an example of what just happened. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. Read. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You see that thing? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, 
and him only shall thou serve. So what is Christ telling Satan here? He says, listen, you are supposed to worship the Lord your God and him only shall thou serve. Just like he served when he was told, when he was having a conversation about Job, about you. Because Satan, after he was told what he's supposed to do and what not to do, he went about his business to do what he was, what he, what he was supposed to, what he was allowed to do. Guess what? That's the same thing we're reading here. This, Christ told Satan, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Because Satan is a servant of the Lord. He works for the Most High. He's on the payroll. He's an employee. Understand that. Because I know this is very difficult to understand when you come from the Christian church. No, no, no. That's why Christ says you must be born again. Give me Hebrews 5, verse 12 real quick. This is why the apostle Paul said what he said here. Watch this. Hebrews 5, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. You see that thing? Which, you have need that one teach you again. He says, for the time you ought to be teachers, because you're supposed to be teaching, but now you have, is, you have need, meaning it's necessary for you to be taught again. Because the things that we have learned in the lens of our captivity is against this Bible. Read. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. You see that thing? So now you have to be born again when you come into this truth. That's why it says you have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracle of God. The first principles of the oracles of God is that you must be taught. And when you are taught, you have to what? You have to look at this now. With your, with your eyes open, your spiritual eyes open so you can understand what's going on. That's why the Most High God is, taught, is called the Almighty. Nothing happens on this earth without, without his, know, his knowledge. He knows everything that happens on this earth. You understand? Now, go back. Go back to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 1. Sarag 2, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. He says you must prepare your soul for temptation because you are going to be tempted because what we read in Job, you see that Satan left off to do what? To tempt our forefather Job. Guess what? The same thing happens to you today. You decide, you know what? I have a sin I'm struggling with. Now I'm going to fight now. I'm going to repent from this thing that is troubling me. Guess what happens when you start to repent from that thing? You are going to be tempted. Trust me. You will be. There's no if or maybe about it. You are going to be tempted. You have to be put in a position where you now have to decide, are you going to serve the Lord or you're going to, you're going to respond to your last? The choice is yours. You understand? That's when the truth will be revealed on that day when your trial comes. Watch this. It says you must prepare your soul for temptation because guess what? When during your temptation, that's when your lusts are activated. Understand that? And Satan understands our lusts. He knows that. Satan knows what is your lust. He knows it. You might not, you might not know or bother to find out to find out, but Satan knows it. He knows your lust. Watch this. And that's where he attacks, by the way. Give me James, chapter 1, verse 12. James 1. Let me show you what happens. When you decide, you know what? I'm going to fight now, okay? I'm going to prepare my soul for temptation. You are repenting. You serve the Lord by letting go of the idols that you was worshiping. Guess what? This is what happens. Give me James, chapter 1, verse 12. James, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Now that's heavy. Right? This is a heavy verse right here. Read it again, verse 12. Mm. James chapter 1, verse 12. Go ahead. 
Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Stop right there. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. So for you to be blessed, you must endure your temptations. Because remember, it says, prepare thy soul for temptation. So in order for us, to, for the Lord to prove that you are blessed, for us to prove that you are blessed, guess what? You are going to endure, you have to endure the temptation that is going to come, guaranteed. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. He says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see what he's saying? He says, endure. Endure hardness. The hardness of temptation that is going to come upon you. He's telling you what you have to endure. You must endure hardness. You understand? You must endure hardness. It says, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because what is the, what, what, what is the characteristic of a soldier? What makes a soldier? The mission. Because the soldier's mindset is supposed to be about the mission and about the nation. That is the mind state of a soldier. The mission and about the state of the nation. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. This is the mission. One thing about a soldier is a soldier always stays on mission. This is the mission that we was given. Read that. Ecclesiastes 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh -huh. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You see that thing? That's the mission right there. You fear God and keep his commandments. For that is the whole duty of men. Because that's the, the soldier understands duty. What is our duty? Our duty is to keep the commandments of the Most High, To endure the hardness of the temptation that will come upon you. That's why it is important to prepare yourself for the temptation. Because you understand the hardness of the temptation that will come to try you. You understand? Go back to 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Next verse. No man that warreth no man that what? himself. Hold on. No man that what? No man that warreth. Because we are, this is war. He says, no man that warreth. You are at war. When you prepare yourself for temptation, Guess what? When you say, I'm coming to serve the Lord, you are declared. This is, it means it's declaration of war. You are declaring for war now. That's why he's saying here, no man that warreth, because this is a spiritual war. Read. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Because guess what? It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. What does it mean to entangle yourself? We're not talking about the entanglement that Jada Pinkett was talking about on the red table. No, not that type of entanglement. It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Because for you to be to entangle yourself, that means you are you are you are you are imprisoned by this thing. You are entangled, you are entangled, you are trapped. You understand? Here you are, you are coming to serve the Lord, but you are distracted of who, you are distracted of, you, you, you want to see, you are busy doing, doing, you are busy voting, you are busy attending uh, political meetings and all of that, getting an ANC card. You, you see that? You are, you, you, are, you are not on the mission, you have forgotten the fight. You've lost the fight or you don't know what this fight is about. You are getting distracted. So what we're reading here is that it says, do not entangle yourself, meaning don't be distracted. You are at war. Because when you have the gun at war, the physical war out there, you know that you, your gun is jammed, you're dead. Likewise, you don't apply, guess what's going to happen? Sin will overcome you, eventually will bring death unto you. 
Okay, read verse 4 again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Go ahead. No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Read. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Because our job is to please him who has chosen us to be soldiers. Okay. So now, let's go back. Let's go back to James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So now what you want to notice is that it says you must endure the temptation because it will come. For when he is tried, because the job of the temptation is to try. Him. Because Satan, that's where he play, that's his playground. Temptation, confusion, because of what? Because of the lust that is within you that you are not you are not repenting from. Satan, that's what he's going to target. He's going to go after that lust that is not what? That is, you have not repented from. Watch this. Because it says when he is tried. Because you are going to be tried. Understand that. Give me that in 2 Timothy. I mean 2 Peter 4 verse 12. 2 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. 2 Peter. No, no. 1 Peter. Not 2 Peter. 1 Peter 4 verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Which is to what? Some, which is to try you. You see, the fiery trial, which is to try you, meaning the trial is there to try you, to try your spirit. Go ahead. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Because the way it's going to happen is going to be some strange phenomenon. It's going to be some strange thing that is it's going to be like something strange is happening to you. No, that's the Lord trying you. That's the most High trying you. Understand that. The Lord is going to use some strange phenomena to try you to see where you at. Okay. Watch this. Mm. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Because it says what? It says the fiery trial which is to try you. The fiery trial which is to try you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Read that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, mm -hmm. and having done all to stand. Read that again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So now, you, are, you see what the Lord is saying? This is the Apostle Paul speaking now. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor, the whole armor of God. Give me that in, uh, in, the, give me that in the book of Romans, okay? Let's see what is the armor. He says, take unto you the whole armor, the whole armor of God. Give me that thing in Romans chapter 13. Okay, Romans chapter 13, uh, start at verse 12. Romans 13, verse 12. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, Come on. and let us put on the armor of light. You see that thing? It says, let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light. What is the armor of light? Read verse 14. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the armor. It says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the armor of light. Christ, he's that armor of light. Give me that in Psalms 40 verse 7. Or give me Hebrews, because now we are in the New Testament. Give me, give me Hebrews 10. Give me Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9. No, no, verse 7. That's what I want. Hebrews 10 verse 7. Read that. 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. You see that thing? So Christ said, I come in the volume of the book. So when he says, put on the armor of light, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, read the whole Bible. That's what he's saying. That's what the four chapters is about. That's how you put, that's you putting the whole armor. You see that thing? That's, where, that's why the four chapters is about that. You put in the whole armor, you understand? To prepare against the evil day, the day of your trial. Go back to where he was at now. Okay? Ephesians 6 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Go ahead. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. The whole Bible. He, right? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Mm -hmm. Having done all to stand. You see that thing? Having done all to stand. So the question you have to ask yourself is, are you doing all, all to are you doing all that there is to stand to prepare your soul for temptation? If the answer is no, you better sit down and examine yourself. You understand? Jump down. Jump down to verse 16. Ephesians 6, verse 16. Read that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Go ahead. Above all, taking the shield of faith, mm -hmm. wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see that thing? It says you must take the shield of faith. Because yes, you are keeping the commandments and the faith that you have, you have the your faith you have is in Christ. You have the faith in the sacrifice that Christ made plus keeping of the commandments. Guess what? That's you taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall what? Ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, meaning the trials. Because the wicked is going to try you. Give me that in Proverbs 12, verse 26. Okay? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Go ahead. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Mm -hmm. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. You see that thing? The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. Because the, the wicked of the wicked around you, they are going to seduce you to take you away from the laws of the Most High. They're going to seduce you to take you away from obeying what is written in this book. That's your family members, that's your kids, that's your father, that's your mother, that whosoever is close to you, that's exactly what they will do. You understand? Give me that in John 10, 34. 35, maybe somewhere there. John 10, 35, somewhere there. Not John, Matthew, I'm sorry. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, verse 35. Read that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. Go ahead. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father you see and the thing? daughter. Hold on. It says, I'm come to say, I'm coming to what? It says, I'm coming to set a man at variance, meaning at odds, at disagreement, you understand, against his father. When it comes to what? When it comes to this Bible. Because our fathers, some of them will not believe this book. You are going to be at odds with one another when it comes to this. You understand? Read. And the daughter against her mother. You see that thing? And a daughter against her mother when it comes to this Bible. Go ahead. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. You see that thing? So these are family members. The Lord is saying, guess what? I'm going to set you at odds with them. That's we have a notice. <sighs> when you come into this truth, right? Give me that in 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. Just so I can prove my point. When you come into this truth, this is what's going to happen to you. As you start to apply the laws of the Most High God, this is what's going to happen to you. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. Go ahead. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, mm -hmm. and shall be turned into another man. And you shall be turned into another man. 
Meaning what? A completely brand new person. A new woman, new, new man, new woman. Right? Now jump down to verse 11. Watch this. Now this is Saul. This is talking about Saul, King Saul. Watch this. Read verse 11 now. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Is Saul also among the prophets? Now everybody's like, wait a minute. I used to know this brother right here. I know this guy. You know, he used to smoke. You know, we used to go and sleep with multiple women together. We used to hosha together. I know that sister. You know, we used to be hoshering together. Now she's wearing long dresses. She's got a headscarf on. She don't, you are not, they, they don't recognize you. You understand? Guess what? When it says he's going to set you at odds, he's not necessarily also talking about you're going to fight. No. He's also talking about that you're just not going to relate. There's just this disconnect. But he said, don't know he's talking about it. But you can see that, yeah, you know, you are my brother, you are my sister, you are my, but we don't connect. There's just something like we are, you see, there's just, there's this big, you listen, you are on two, you are on completely two different uh, universes, you are parallel universes. There's no intersection. I'm speaking from experience, you understand? So guess what? Go back to uh, Matthew 10. Matthew 10, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 36. Watch this. The Lord says, I'm going to set you at, I'm going to set you at odds with them when it comes to this Bible. They can't relate to you. You can't relate to them. Okay. The Lord is, and guess what? They can see it in your spirit, by the way. They can see it. Read what you got. Matthew 10 verse 36. Read it. Matthew chapter 10 verse 36. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You see that thing? And man's enemies shall be days of his own household, shall be they of his own house. Your wife, your children, your husband, your brother, your aunt, your father, your grandma, your mother, so on and so forth. Your younger, your, your younger brother, your older brother. Listen, the people that you, those are the people that the Lord said, those are the ones that I'm going to set you at odds with them because of this Bible. And they're gonna persecute you for what is written. Go ahead. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You see what he's saying? And he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Example: some of you might be, you know, is my mother's is my mother's birthday, is my father's birthday, is my granny's birthday. What listen, you be sending text. Happy birthday because you don't want them to be upset. Guess what? Jeremiah 2 verse 33. This is the problem. You keep going. The Lord is watching it. He said, hmm. This one thinks they are clever. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 2 verse 33. Yeah, you see, I don't celebrate Christmas anymore. But, you know, I just say Merry Christmas just for them. No, no. Mm -mm. You're not supposed to be doing none of that. And when, because, you know, I remember there was a time, because I think I mentioned this before. I think it was the day when I was born, right? My niece, she sent me a text and I told her, listen, you know, I don't celebrate this stuff no more. I don't celebrate this stuff no more because guess what they will do? They will, they will test you to see if, do you really believe this stuff? Hmm. Jeremiah 2, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33, watch this. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33. Go ahead. Why trimest thou thy way to seek love? Mm -hmm. Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. You see what he's saying? He says, why do you trim your way to seek love? You cannot trim your ways. Your ways talk about what? The laws of the Most High. You know that on the Sabbath, no buying, no selling, no cooking, no working, none of that. But you know there's a cousin who is coming in town you're supposed to be making sure that you're preparing for the Sabbath and you're going to be preparing for class. You're going to be studying. Your cousin comes. Now people are drinking. They are partying and all of that. You are trimming your ways. You don't believe this. And he says, not only that, 
it says now it says what therefore has thou also taught the wicked ones your ways meaning what you are teaching them that i don't really believe this that's why i can bend the rules now you see that so guess what go back to matthew chapter 10 by the way this is part of your trials these are the fiery trials that will come upon you understand that because i know some of you forgot the point matthew 10 verse 37 Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He Go that ahead. loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that thing? He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Because remember what our forefather Abraham, the Lord told Abraham, our forefather, Go and sacrifice your only son Isaac. He did it. When he was about to, you know, sacrifice the child, the Lord said, okay, I see you can do it now. I just wanted to see if you can do it. You understand? But the point is, that was an example of faith that he showed us in Genesis. You understand? Here's a, the, the, thing, the thing about it is that, is that's why it says, he that loveth son, daughter, son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Meaning what? Some, some, some people, you can be what? You know that the child, you, the, these children you've got, they are good for nothing. Okay? Because you see the stories, you know, like on, 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 you know, back in the day when we used to watch DSTV, right? There used to be a show. Um, it, it used to be about, I think it was on Discovery Channel or something. It, it, crime. I think, I think it's the crime channel. Crime. And you see how... Um, a son will be just a demon and the parent will be defending the child until the child ends up killing their parent. You see that? So in this truth, you know your son is the devil the Bible speaks of, but you are busy just be dragging him along. You don't want to let him go. You don't want to let him go. He's terrorizing the community, doesn't want to repent. No, but that's my son. No, he's the devil. But you don't want to let him go. But you know what the scriptures say. You see that thing? That's why, that's why he's saying what he's saying in there. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Now, go back to Proverbs 12, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read that. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Mm -hmm. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. You see that thing? The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. They says the righteous is better. He's not just saying he's just excellent. No, he says more excellent. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. What makes the righteous more excellent than his neighbor? Give me that in Romans 2. Okay. Romans chapter 2, I always mix this, these ones up. Roman, Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. Romans 2 verse 18. Let's read that. This is what makes the righteous more excellent than his neighbor. Watch this. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Uh -huh. And knows his will and approvest the things that are more excellent. Mm-hmm. Being instructed out of the law. You see the things that are more excellent? The laws of God. What makes the righteous excellent is God's commandments. And the wicked of our people will see that. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your auntie. Guess what? They're going to see that. They're going to see the righteousness of God being fulfilled by your actions. You applying God's commandments. You used to be a liar, a thief. You understand? So on and so forth. You don't do those things no more. Guess what? What does that mean? The, the wicked of our people, your family members and so forth, they are going to see that thing. They're going to say, try to seduce you to get you out of the spirit. They say, you see, he doesn't have it together as he make it seems to be. That's the mindset of the wicked of our people. And that's what we read in Matthew 10. Those are the trials that are going to come upon you. You understand? Watch this. 
Go back to Ephesians 6, verse 16 again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Read. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see that thing? It says, it says you must take the shield of faith. You must have faith in this truth. And your faith is shown by your works. Give me James chapter 2, verse 24. James 2, 24. Watch this. Your faith is going to be proved by your works. James 2, verse 24. James chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. For be... James chapter 2, verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and mm -hmm. not by faith only. You see that thing? By your works, that's how you are going to be justified. Not just by your faith only. Yes, your faith, your, your works is going to prove your, the faith that you have. Okay? Your works are going to prove the faith that you have. So, go back to where he was at. Hebrews, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 16 again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. He says, above all, you must take the shield of faith. Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see that thing? You shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The fiery darts is the fiery trials that will be sent your way to try you. Because Satan, will, he knows your lust. He's going to activate the, he's going to what? He's going to create an environment around you to activate the lust that's within you. Watch this. Give me, go back to James chapter 1 now. James 1, verse 12 again. James chapter 1, verse 12. Read that again. James chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For mm -hmm. when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Which Read. the Lord has promised to them that love him. So he says, when he's tried, because you are going to be tried. You're going to be tried by the people around you, the people that know you. Watch this. It says, ye shall receive the crown of life. That crown of life is what? The kingdom. You understand? Watch this. Everlasting life. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The most High God will not go back on his promises. You understand? We are the proof that the Lord will not go back on his promises. For the sake of our forefathers, the Lord who is waking up, us up in these last days. You understand? Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, mm -hmm. I am tempted of God. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Now, that's a heavy verse right there. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Because guess what? The, the mind of the Negro will always come up with ways, excuses, scenarios to play out why they found themselves in that sin. No, no. He's going to tell you why you were tempted. The Bible is going to tell you why you got tempted. Okay? The Bible will tell you that. Read that again, verse 13. Because I remember, what was, this, what was his name? It was some cricket player. I think Hansi Kronje. You understand? The stuff that he was doing, when he got caught, they asked him, why did you do it? He said, the devil made me do it. Okay? That's a much deeper topic, but my point is, that was the last that was within him. Okay, read verse 13 again. James chapter 1 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Read. For God cannot be tempted with evil, mm -hmm. neither tempted he any man. Next verse. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see what he's saying? That's the answer right there. So he's, tell, he's answering verse 13. He says, but every man is tempted, man or woman, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There's no way that the Lord is the one that's tempting you. No, the Lord is not doing it. Your own, that's why he says your own. Your own lust is what's tempting you. Your own lust is what's drawing you away. Because you see that part right there? It says, when he is drawn away 
away from what? Away from the laws of God. The law that says thou shalt not. The law that says thou, the, that this law and that law that says thou shalt not. Guess what? Your lust, your own lust is what's going to draw you away from the laws of God. Because Satan is going to what? He's going to activate the environment around you to make sure that your lust, that, your, that lust of yours is activated so you can act upon it. Guess what? When you act upon it, you are not enduring the temptation. You are failing at that point. You see that? Read verse 14 once again. James chapter 1 verse 14. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see that thing? So now, for instance, mm, give me the book of Judges. Okay, give me Judges 13 verse 24. He says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Give me the book of Judges chapter 13 verse 24. Judges chapter 13, verse 24. Read. And the woman bare a son mm -hmm. and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. So now Samson is born, okay? Samson is born, our forefather from the tribe of, of Dan. Watch this. Give me Judges chapter 16, verse 4. Judges, you know what? Mm. Judges chapter 16, yeah, read verse 4. Watch this. Judges chapter 16, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So now Samson, he loved Delilah. But Samson had a, he has a history of women. You understand? Because there's, there's a spirit that Samson was dealing with. He was dealing with the spirit of lust. That was the Samson's problem. The proof of that, jump up to verse 1. Judges 16, verse 1. Read that. Judges chapter 16, verse 1. Read. Then when Samson to Gaza, and saw the and harlot, and went in unto her. You see what Samson was doing? He says, then when Samson to Gaza, he got to Gaza, which is where the wilderness is, and saw the and harlot, meaning a prostitute, and he went in unto her. He slept with the prostitute. Now jump down to verse 4. Now is done. He's no longer dealing with that prostitute. Now read verse 4 now. Watch this. Come on. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. Mm -hmm. of Sprick, whose name was Delilah. Read verse 4 again. You were in the matrix there. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. And it came to pass mm -hmm. afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. Delilah. So Samson loved Delilah. But what you want to see is that, give me Judges 14 verse 1, just to prove my point. Judges chapter 14 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. You see that thing? Now, he is dealing, dealing with the daughter of the Philistine. He is enticed by a Philistine woman, a Canaanite woman. He says, I'm going for that one. Now, we are in Judges 16. He didn't work out with that one. Now, he's dealing with, an, he's dealing with, a, a, with a harlot, a prostitute, in chapter 16. Not shortly after that, he's dealing with Delilah. So what was the, what is the pro, what what is the thing that Samson was dealing with? He was dealing with lust. You understand? That was his problem. Lust was his problem. Now go back to Judges sixteen, verse four again. Okay. Judges chapter sixteen, verse four. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. Read. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. So and what? see wherein his enticed him. You see that thing? So it says, The laws of the Philistines came up unto her. Now, the laws of the Philistines are talking to Delilah. Listen, 
We need to destroy this man. Here's what you're going to do. You are going to entice him. Okay. Read that part again, verse 5. Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. You see what it's saying? So they are using the woman to entice Samson to find out his weakness. So they can exploit the weakness that he has. Guess what? Today, what does Satan, what does he do? He ex his job is to exploit your weaknesses. So those weaknesses, they translate into what? Sin, lust, fornication, lying. You understand? Hatred, envy, anger, so on and so forth. Those are, that's what Satan exploits. He will exploit those things. Because as long as they are not checked, he is going to exploit them. Satan is an old spirit. He knows you. He's very patient, by the way. You understand? So now, what is, what is happening here? The laws of the Philistines, they've noticed that this brother, this man right here, this Israelite, he's got a problem with women. So guess what? We're going to use, we're going to use that weakness to destroy him. You see that? Hmm. Verse 5, once again. Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Read. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, mm -hmm. and by what means we may prevail against him, mm -hmm. that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of his 1,100 pieces of silver. You see what he's saying? They are going to pay him for this. The point is this. It says entice him because they knew what was his problem. Last was his problem. So we're going to exploit the last that he has. We're going to use this woman to entice or to activate the last that is, that is within him. Go back to James now, chapter 1. James 1, verse 14 again. James chapter 1, verse 14. Read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Because that's exactly what happened to Samson. He was enticed because of his own lust that, he was, that was burning him. He was dealing with lust. So because that lust was burning him, guess what? He was enticed by, he was enticed by what, was, what, he, what he saw with his eyes. The lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh. You understand? That was his problem. The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. And because he had those lusts within him, that was activated by Delilah. And the Philistines wanted to use his lust to destroy him. That's how Satan moves. Satan moves like that. He is patient. He will keep trying you to see whether you are rooted and grounded in the scripts like we read last night in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Watch this. Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go to our forefather, Joseph. Okay. Watch this. Let's go to Genesis. Okay. Let's go to Genesis chapter... Read Genesis 39, okay? Genesis chapter 39 and verse... Let's start at verse 5. Genesis 39, verse 5. Genesis chapter 39, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house. Overseer in his house. And over all that he had, Come on. that the Lord had blessed, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in, in, his, in the house and in the field. So now at this point, Joseph is made overseer in Egypt. You understand? Go ahead. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not what he had. Save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. 
So Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Meaning what? Joseph was good looking and he was well favored by Pharaoh. Go ahead. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. You see what, you see what Pharaoh's wife was doing? Pharaoh's wife went to Joseph and said, listen, he went to Joseph, he says, his master, is what? His master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Remember verse 6 says, Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Joseph was good looking. Verse 7 says, he says, the Pharaoh's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. What was her problem? The lust of the eyes. Give me First John 2, verse 16. Okay. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Watch this. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that thing? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So all of those, that deals with your, your, your own lust. That you, is, that's what we read in James 1, when it says he's tempted of his own lust and enticed. That's what happened to Samson. He was enticed by Delilah. You understand? So likewise, what's happening here is Pharaoh's wife, she's dealing with what? The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. So she cast her eyes upon Joseph because that's the spirit she was dealing with. Lust. That was the problem. Go back to Genesis 39, verse 7. Genesis chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. You see that thing? She said, lie with me, meaning have sex with me. Watch this. Go ahead. But he refused. But he did what? But he refused. But Joseph refused. Why did Joseph refuse? Hold this. Give me Sirach 18, verse 30. Sirach chapter 18, verse 30. Ecclesiastes 18, verse 30. Mm-hmm. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust, mm -hmm. but refrain thyself from thine appetites. You see that thing? He says, go, this is the commandment. He says, don't go after your lust, but refrain yourself from thy appetites. So guess what happened? Jo this is what our forefather Joseph did. Joseph, he did not go after his lust. Because think about, you think uh, uh, Pharaoh's wife was an ugly woman? No, she was not. She was a beautiful woman. I mean, she was the wife of the king. So she was not, uh, she was not a ragamuffin. No, she was a beautiful woman. But Joseph, our forefather, guess what he did? He refrained himself. He did not go after his lust but he refrained himself from his appetite. So he didn't sleep with his, with, with his master's wife. He didn't do that. You understand? He did not do that. Because you can imagine, she had makeup on. She, they were wearing, you know how the Egyptians was wearing also? They were wearing promiscuously. You understand? With all the meh, the perfumes and all of that. So she wasn't bad looking. No. She wasn't bad looking. So, because you have to really imagine, remember, Egypt is a, is a kingdom on earth, the greatest of the kingdom on earth, because Egypt back then, it was like America today. That's how Egypt was back then, the power of the earth. So you mean to tell me that Pharaoh was dealing with a flabby gut woman? No. This is a king, this is a queen. You understand? This is the wife of a king. She didn't look like Penny Haynes. You understand? She didn't look like Penny Haynes. No, no. Mm -mm. My point is, Joseph also, he has to see this. 
and he refrained himself. Now let's go back. Go back to Genesis 39 now. Read verse 8. Genesis chapter 9 verse 8. Read. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, mm -hmm. my master, which is not what is with me in the house, and he had, com and he had committed all that he had to my hand. So now this uh, Joseph is telling Pharaoh's wife, he said, listen, your ma my master has committed all that is in the house to me. You understand? So I can't, I can't do this. That's why he refused. One of the reasons why he refused. Go ahead. There is none greater in this house than I. Mm -hmm. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. You see that thing? Oh, then. Because, hold on. He says, because thou art his wife. So what did Joseph understand? Do not sleep with your neighbor's wife. He understood that thou shalt not commit adultery. He understood that law. Go ahead. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You see that thing? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Remember in verse 7, she said, lie with me. Have sex with me, she said. Read verse 10 now. Watch this. Verse 10. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day. Stop right there. He, uh, hold on. As she spake to Joseph day by day. So what was she doing? She was enticing him. You understand? She was enticing him. Go ahead. As she spake to Joseph day by day, mm -hmm. that he hearkened not unto her to lie with her. Or to be with her. You see that thing, Mini Joseph wasn't listening to none of that. Go ahead. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men in the of the house there within. So now think about it. It says, it came to pass. Because remember, day by day, every day, she's pestering Joseph. Sleep with me, have sex with me, so on and so forth. This was day by day, continually. Now it says, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. There was none of the men of the house there within. So now you have to really think about it. This is the king's wife. She got all the men out. And said, you know, okay, don't be here on this day. Get out. Everybody get out. She's the king's wife. She can do that. Get the hell out. You understand? Because... Now she's realizing, I'm talking to this guy, nothing is happening, I need to create scenarios to get rid of the people in the house, so it, just be, so it can just be me and him. Okay, go ahead. And she caught him by his garment, saying... She caught, she caught, hold on, she caught Joseph by his garment, by his clothing. Watch this, go ahead. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. You see what Joseph did? Joseph, he says he was doing his business. So now you can imagine, now she caught Joseph by the garment. So the business, you just fill the blanks. Joseph was dealing with, you know, he was bathing and all of that, getting himself together and all that. She comes, she takes Joseph's garment. You understand? Jo she, grabbed by, she grabbed Joseph by the guy, jo Joseph, like what? He left. He ran. He fled the scene. Okay, come on. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garments in her hand and was fled forth. And was fled forth. So Joseph left the garment in her, in her position. Read on. That she called unto the men of her house. Remember, the men of the house was not there. Now she's calling unto the men of the house to return now. Go ahead. And speaks to them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. Mm -hmm. He hath came in unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice. Now she is accusing Joseph of raping her now. Read. And it came to pass, when he, had, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me, and fled and got him out. 
You see that thing? So Joseph left his garment. So Joseph was, was, was doing whatever business he was doing. Guess what she was doing? Now she was forcing himself onto Joseph. And Joseph decided, you know, I'm going to leave the garment that I have on. And of course, but because here it doesn't say, hmm, let me see, let me see. It doesn't say Joseph was naked because I think in the Christian church, that's what they teach. They say Joseph left naked. No, it doesn't say that here. But Joseph left his garment with the sister. Go ahead. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. You see that thing? Because now remember, she's the queen. Now she realized that she was rejected. Now she's upset. She has to do something to revenge now. Guess what she's doing? Now she's framing Joseph. You understand? She's framing Joseph now. Go ahead. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mark me. You see that thing? He says, now he's, he's, tell, he's telling Pharaoh, listen, this Joseph came in, okay, Joseph, Joseph came in and Joseph raped me. Now, because Joseph left the garment behind, now she's using that as evidence of the lie now she's perpetrating to her husband. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. You see that thing? So now, what was Joseph doing? Give me Sirach 21. Watch this. This is what our forefather Joseph did. Okay? Joseph, uh, Joseph did this thing. Sirach 21, verse 2. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. You see what Joseph did? It says, run from sin as though you are running from a poisonous snake. You understand? He says, that's how much you must, how, how much, this, how, that's how serious you must take it. He says, run away from sin as though you are running from a poisonous snake. Read. For if thou comest to near it, mm -hmm. it will bite thee. Read. The teeth thereof are as teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. You see that part right there? Is if you, if you come too close to this sin or to this lust, or you what? You indulge in this lust. You, you meddle with it. Like it says in 2nd Ezra 16 verse 67. You meddle with it. It says, guess what it's going to do? It says, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. Remember what it says in James. What is in Peter's? When it says, Satan is like a roaring lion. See who he may devour. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what is happening here. So... The example that we are reading in Genesis 39 is what Sirach is saying in Sirach 21 verse 2. Our forefather Joseph, literally, he ran for it. Joseph, he ran from it so that he does not find himself entangled in this sin. You see that? That's what is, we read about in the book of Sirach 18 verse 30. He says, go not after thy lust. So when he says, don't go after your lust, that's what he's talking about. Joseph didn't do that. He disciplined himself. Now watch this. Let's go back. Go back to James chapter 1, verse 14. Again. James, the 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see that thing? Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. I'm showing you two instances. Joseph was enticed, but he did not what? He did not act on that enticement by that woman. Samson, on the other hand, he was enticed. And guess what Samson did? Samson, Samson he fell for it. You understand? I'm showing you two instances when one forefather, he decided to apply the laws of God. On the other hand, another forefather, he was dealing with lust, he was enticed, Guess what happened? He was seduced because of the lust that was within him. You understand? So it is today. By the way, this is not just for the men, it's for the sisters as well. Brothers that are burning in their lust, you understand? Sisters too. Guess what you must do? These are examples that the Lord left behind so we can apply ourselves, so you can endure your temp the temptations 
that will definitely come your way. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of, uh, give me the, you know what? Hmm. Go back to Judges. Let me touch on something. Go back to Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Read that again. Because in Judges, when it comes to Samson, Delilah, she knew exactly how to deal with Samson. Watch this. Genesis, Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Read that. Judges chapter 16, verse 5. Read. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, mm -hmm. Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. Read. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of his 1,100 pieces of silver. So now they are saying, we want to pay you if you do this for us. But your job is to go out there and entice him. So over time, Delilah kept, kept trying to, to, to figure out what was Samson's strength so, what? so that they can overcome Samson. Eventually, she ended up doing it. Watch this. Jump down to verse 19. Because when she, when she overcame, when she, was, when she was able to entice him, this is what happened. And this is how, he, how she enticed him. This is how she was able to weaken Samson. Read that. Verse 19. Judges chapter 16, verse 19. Read. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Mm. And she called for a man and caused him to shave off the, the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. You see that thing? Because the laws of God is power. But so what you are seeing here says, it says she made him sleep upon her knees. You just have to read between the lines here. You understand? Meaning she got him on lock on this one. The coochie. She, he fell for the coochie. That was the problem with Samson. You understand? Give me that in first Esdras. Okay? This is Simp 101. This is Simp. We are, simp we are, we are slowly going into Simp Chronicles right here. Give me that in first Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. First Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. First Ezra, the 4 verse 26. Go ahead. Yea, many they be that have run out of their wits for women mm -hmm. and become servants for their sakes. Read verse 26 again. First Ezra, the 4 verse 26. Go ahead. Yea, many they be which that have run out of their wits for women and, have, and become servants for their sakes. Is as many there be that have run out of their wits for women, meaning they've lost their minds because of a woman, and have become servants for their sakes. Go ahead. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. You see that thing? Many also have perished, meaning they've died. They've dropped dead. They've erred. They've sinned. And what? He says they've erred, meaning what? In the knowledge of the Lord, and have sinned for women. That's a simp. Samson was one. Samson was one. So it is today. Don't leave it back there. No, no. Bring it to today. You understand? Bring it to today. Watch this. Give me, give me the book. I'll give an example. Our forefather, King David. You understand? Because some, some, some brothers, they deal with fornication. Some, they deal with money. Money is their God. You understand? Fornication and money. Sex and money. Though those two things right there. Mm -hmm. Watch this. We dealt with the fornication spirit. You understand? But I just want to show you an example. When our forefather, King David, when he dealt with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, you understand? And got him killed. This is what the Lord did. Because remember, he slept with, 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 with Uriah's wife. And guess what? Because remember what? Mm, let's go to James. We're coming back here. Go back to James again. Read James chapter 1 verse 14. One, one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface what I'm about to go, go into with this. James 1 verse 14. Mm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, just bear with me. James chapter 1 verse 14. Read that again. 
James chapter 1 verse 14. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see that thing? Next verse. Watch this. Then when the lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Read that again, verse 15. James chapter 1, verse 15. Mm -hmm. then, when, then when the lust hath conceived. No, no. Then when lust, then when lust, then when lust hath conceived. Go ahead. Then when lust hath conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. It does what? It bringeth forth sin. Because when you act on that lust, guess what happens? It will bring forth sin. Now you are breaking the commandment. Whether it's fornication, whether it's because you love money, you're going to make, you're going to break the laws of God because the love of money is what's in your spirit. The love of a coochie is what's in your spirit. You're going to break the laws of God. Read that thing again. Verse 15. James chapter 1 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth mm -hmm. forth death. He says, and sin, when it is finished, meaning when you don't repent from it, is going to bring forth death. That's what he's saying. Now, watch this. He says, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, okay? Give me Psalms chapter 33, verse 7. Psalms 33, verse 7. Because this is when, when sin was finished, this is what it brought. It didn't bring death to our forefather, King David, but it, it brought forth a disease unto him. Give me that in Psalms chapter 30. No, Psalms 38, not 33. Psalms 38, verse 7. Start of verse 1. Read verse 1. We're going to jump. Psalms 38 verse 1. Mm -hmm. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Because now David is praying to the Lord right here. He says, rebuke me not in thy wrath, meaning don't correct me in your anger. Neither, ch is neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Because of what he did. But, but David was sincere. That's why even after all of that, that was done, the Lord still loved, the, the most High God still loved King David. You understand? Jump down to verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease. Read. And there is no soundness in my flesh. You see what happened? The Lord plagued him with an STD. Read that again, verse 7. Psalm 38, verse 7. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, mm -hmm. and there is no soundness in my flesh. So because of what he did, the Lord, he what? He what? He, the, he, says, he says, for my loins are filled with a loathsome disease. The Lord plagued him with an STD. You understand? That's why it says his loins were what? What? were filled with a loathsome disease, meaning what? A painful disease on his loins. The Lord brought forth an STD, okay? Because he went after his lust. His lust for Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Timothy now, chapter 6. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy. Because for some, it's not fornication, it's not sex, it's money. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Go ahead. But godliness with contentness is great gain. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? You must be content for what you've got. Go ahead. Because this goes into what? Covetousness. Go ahead. For we brought nothing into this world. Mm -hmm. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. He says, we brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing out. You understand? You come in, you go. You are born, you die. Read, you, when you're born, you don't bring nothing here. When you die, you don't live with nothing. You leave everything here. You can read about that in Ecclesiastes when King Solomon was complaining about this stuff. Go ahead. Verse 8. 
and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. He says, you know, having food and raiment, you've got food, you've got clothes on your back. He says, let us thou, let us what? Let us there be with, let us, let us be there with content. Meaning, be content with what you've got. Give me that in Sarah chapter 40. Okay, Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus chapter 40, verse 18. Let's read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse chapter 40, verse 18. Read. To, to labor and to be content with that a man hath mm -hmm. is a sweet life. You see that thing? But he it that findeth it. Hold on. Wait. To be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. So you must be content with what you have. Be satisfied. Don't have, don't have the spirit of covetousness. That's why here in Timothy, go back to Timothy chapter 6, verse 8 again. 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. No, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6, verse 8. 1 oh. Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You see that thing? Let us be there with content. Be content with what you have. That's a sweet life if you are satisfied with your portion. Go ahead. Come on, verse 9. Come on, let's go. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts Mm -hmm. which drown men in destruction and perdition. You see what happens? So now the Apostle Paul is going into it now. He says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation. Because those that are rich in this world, guess what they do? They have access to things now. They have access to places that they never thought they'd be. So now they think they, they have money. Now they are thinking, you know what? I want to go to Madagascar. And now, guess what? They're going to be going to Madagascar on the Sabbath day. They're going to be buying, and they're going to be buying. You understand? They're going to be doing all kinds of things on that glorious day of the Lord. You understand? They're going to be dealing with all kinds of women because it's money and women. That's what we're dealing with here. I'm just massaging the topic. You know, when I go into it, I do, but I'm just giving simple examples. You understand? So here's saying, they that be rich, they fall into temptation because they end up being in places where they're not supposed to be, talking to people, dealing with women. They, are not, they have no business dealing with, you understand? Because of what? Money gives them those options. Okay, read verse 10. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. which while some coveted after. Whoa, 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 whoa. While some did what? which while some coveted after. You see what the problem is? The problem is not money. The love of money, that's the problem. That's why it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. He didn't say money is evil. No, it says the love of it is the root of all evil because that evil is going to come from where? It's going to come from the temptations that you're going to fall upon in verse 9. Read verse 9 again. Second Tim, First Timothy chapter six verse nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. You see that thing? Into not it's, it's not just temptation, but it's a snare, it's a trap. Okay, go ahead. Meaning what? A, that lavish lifestyle, that that fast life, that's the snare. Because the, that fast life is addictive. You understand? Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, mm -hmm. which drown men in destruction and perdition. That's the problem right there. It says, which drown men into destruction, drown men in destruction and perdition. Okay. Read verse 10. Verse, read verse 10 now again. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. which while some coveted after, they have, er they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with 
many sorrows. He says they've pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So you see what the problem is? He says they love money. He says while, he says, which while some coveted after. You see what, that means money is their God. Because they covet after money. They worship money. Remember what we covetousness. Give me that in Colossians 3. It says, which while some coveted after. So the love of money is the root of all evil. But it says, there are some of those of our people, brothers and sisters, they covet after money. Meaning what? Money is their God. They worship it. Watch this. Colossians 3 verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify therefore your members which are, on the, with, which are upon the earth. Fornication and cleanness in ordinate affection evil concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry you see that thing and covetousness which is idolatry so covetousness is the worshiping of other gods you are willing to go outside of god's commandments to fulfill that last covetousness idolatry that's your idol so let's go back to first timothy 6 now verse 10 again first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 Mm -hmm. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith mm -hmm. and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see that thing? Because eventually that's going to get you killed. That's what, the, that's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us here. So, like I said, some brothers and sisters, they deal money is their God. Some brothers and sisters, Kuchi or Rod is their God. Is that simple? So now what we're reading here is I'm showing you the, the temptations, the trial that will come upon you based on your lust that you are dealing with. And Satan, that's what he's going to attack. He's going, not necessarily attack, but Satan is going to exploit that lust. And he's going to exploit it to the fullest extent. Go back to James chapter 1, verse 14 again. James chapter 1 verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Go ahead. Come on. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Next verse. Do not err, my beloved brethren. You see what James is saying? He says, do not err, meaning don't sin, my beloved brethren. So why, why, why is he saying that? Jump back up to verse 12. Read verse 12 again now. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So now you, you are going to be blessed when you endure the temptations that will come upon you because they are there for you to be tried. You see that thing? When you, when you overcome that temptation, you see that thing? That's when you receive the crown of life. So we are going to, we have to endure the temptations until the end or until the Lord returns. But we must endure until the end. That's it. You understand? That's when you are going to be blessed, the Lord is saying. That's why I said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now let's go back to Sirach now. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see that thing? So this verse, this verse right here, this is a very heavy, heavy verse. There's a Lord in there. You understand? It says, prepare thy soul for temptation because you will be tempted. And you are, when, you, when you are tempted, guess what? You must be able to endure the temptation like James says. Next verse. Go ahead. Set thy heart aright mm -hmm. and constantly endure 
Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. Meaning don't run. He says constantly endure. Endure hardness as a good soldier. You understand? It says, and set thy heart aright and constantly endure. You must be enduring constantly. You cannot give up. Because you overcome, you don't give up and be crying and say, no, I messed up. And Okay, so yes, so what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit there, feel sorry for yourself? Get the hell up and fix this thing. Repent, get it together. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You understand? It says, and make not haste in time of trouble. Meaning don't run. When that trial comes, do not run. Give me that in Proverbs 28 verse 1. When that trial comes, don't run. It's your day. You have to stand in that day. So you can be what? You can be tried and approved. Proverbs 28 verse 1. Read that. Proverbs 28 verse 1. Go ahead. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Mm -hmm. But the righteous are bold as a lion. You see that thing? The wicked, they will run when temptation, when the trial comes. They are going to run. You understand? But it says the righteous are bold as a lion. Because what makes them bold as a lion is the righteousness of the law that is there, that they are applying. They are, they are saving the laws of God. Give me that in Romans 7, verse 25. They're saving God's commandments. You understand? And because of that, they're going to stand bold as a lion. Read what you got. Romans 7 verse 25. Romans 7 verse 25. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Stop right there. So what did he say? Hold on. Wait, wait. You can't run past that. Read it again. Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Read. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Meaning what? Praise the Lord for this thing. Praise the most High God for the Lord Jesus Christ. You better praise the Lord your God. This is the, you see, Christ, Christ is, is how merciful the most High God is upon us. Understand that. This is some heavy stuff, man. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You better praise the most High God. All praises to the most High God for sending his son down here. To die for us. So we can get the chance at the kingdom. Read. So then. With the mind I myself. Serve the law of God. You see that thing? With the mind. Because it says set your mind aright. That's what he read in Sirach 2. It says set thy heart aright. And constantly enjoy. And make not haste in time of trouble. That's why he is saying. What did he say? Read the, read the second part of the verse. So then what? Come on, stay with me. So then with the mind, I serve. So then with the mind, I serve. It says, so with the mind, I myself, it says, so with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Your job is to serve the laws. It's all about the commandments. With your mind, because when your mind is transformed, by the, when your mind is renewed, he says you must, your mind, you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you are born again, your new mind is going to serve the law of the most High God. That's how you're going to be able to endure temptation. That's how you're going to be able to what? To stand bold as a lion. That's what he's talking about right there. Go ahead. But with the flesh, but, uh -huh. the law of sin. But with the flesh, I'm going to serve the law of sin. Because if I'm in, into my feelings, how I feel, how I think, you understand? I'm going to serve the law of sin. What is the law of sin? Death. That's what we read in James chapter 1. You understand? Verse 15, when it says, when sin, when sin it is finished, it bringeth forth death. That is what we're reading here. But with your new mind, you, your new mind is going to tell you, to serve what? To serve the law of God. Your new mind is about the commandments because your old mind was about your flesh to respond to the lust of your flesh. Not to enjoy, not to enjoy the temptation, not to fight, you understand? But to what? To give into it. But with your new mind that is born again, when you are tending to another man, 
You are going to serve the law of God. You are going to deny sin because you know what the consequences they want. That's what you are reading here. Go back to Sarah 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 2 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 2. Read. Set thy hearts aright mm -hmm. and constantly endure. Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. Because the righteous will stand bold as a lion. Because why? They understand that I'm going to fall. I need to get up and keep it moving. I cannot sit here on one place. I need to fight. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Read. Cleave unto him. Mm -hmm. And depart not away. Read. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see that thing? That you may be increased at thy last end. But when the trial comes, you must not let go. You must hang on. You must understand that this is how you are going to be approved as a brother. This is how you are going to be approved as a sister. Go ahead. Whatsoever is put upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Because that's where most brothers and sisters, that's where, that's where the problem comes in. Patience. Lack of patience. When you run out of patience, you're not going to make it in this truth. Understand that. You have to be patient. You must be patient. And I see some brothers, they don't have that. They do not have the patience to wait for the Lord to respond. They don't have the patience. They just want microwave blessings. You are here, but you are still acting like you are in the Christian church. You understand? Where everything, you don't have to do nothing, but you just wait for something that is in the sky. You see that? Pipe dreams. That's what Christianity produces. Christianity produces brothers and sisters with pipe dreams. That's what they produce. That's what that religion produces. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 4. Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, mm -hmm. and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. You must be patient when you are changed to a low estate. In your trial, you have to be patient because the Lord is what? The trial is not there to destroy you. The trial is there to do what? To build you up. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire mm. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see what the Lord is saying? You are going to be acceptable when you go through the furnace of adversity. You must go through trials. And guess what the Lord will do? He says he's going to try you like gold in the fire. Because you are the gold. You are already the gold. Understand that? Could you imagine? It's not that you have to be fashioned into one. No, no. You already a, you are already a, a gold. You are already gold. You are gold already. But when you find gold in the earth, what is the thing that has to happen for that gold to be purified? It must go through fire. It doesn't change the fact that you are gold, but you need to be purified. It's that simple. That's what the Lord is trying to teach us. You are, you are already, you are that pure gold, but this pure gold still needs to be purified. That's the point. You see that? The gold still needs to be purified. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me the book of Luke. Okay? Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. Luke 21 verse 19. Watch this. Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Mm -hmm. In your patience, possess ye your souls. You see that thing? In your patience, possess ye your soul. Don't fail in patience. Watch this. Give me Sirach 17. Because the Lord will, will have mercy upon you when you come to, when we come with him, when you come to him with a contrite spirit, with a contrite heart, that's what the Lord is looking for. You really sincerely, you are repenting from your evil ways. The Lord says, I'm going to accept you. Sirach 17, one of my favorite verses. Sirach 17, verse 24. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 24. Read. But unto them that repent, mm -hmm. he granted them return. Read. And comforted those that failed in patience. You see that thing? 
He says, unto them that repent. He is only going to accept those that repent. He's going to accept them to, he's going to grant them to return. Those that repent though. He says, but unto them that repent, he granted them return. And, comfort, and comforted those that failed in patience. Because you failed in patience. The Lord says, I'm going to comfort you. How does the Lord comfort us? Romans 15 verse 4. This is how the Lord comforts us. Okay. The most High God, this is how he does it. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, mm -hmm. were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the scriptures is what's going to give you comfort. The scripture is going to comfort you, meaning what? As long as you are still breathing, the Lord has not killed you. The Lord has not returned yet. That means the Lord is giving you a chance to get it together. So get it together. You understand? That's why it says, unto them that repent, unto them that repent, he grants them return. And comfort those that failed in patience. Because you failed in patience. You understand? But he is not going to grant you return if you don't repent. That's not going to happen. When you, are re when you are repenting, you are showing the Lord that I failed in patience and I'm coming before you. I'm, I'm humbling myself to come before you for you to accept, you understand, my supplication and allow me to repent so I can get myself right. That's the point. Because the Lord, the Lord is long-suffering to us, what? As the children of Israel. Okay, so I'm going to end the class right here. You understand? Um, I'm going to end the class right here. Let's break bread. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had sub saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High a hand for that. All praises to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. All praises.